What's up guys, this is Photoeden or PhotoTK and we're going to be looking at a tutorial in Nuke about uh, green screening and using the key light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a piece of footage in. Um, hit 1 so the viewer snaps to it. As we can see we've got this nice footage of this bunny, well yeah, don't know what's going on there but <laughs> it's something to use isn't it. Um, and the reason I've chosen this is because it was given to me when I was uh, actually getting taught it myself because um, it can be used to show various methods so for example we need to key out this green but then we also need to cut this out so we'll be covering that as well so first of all um, this can be transferred onto After Effects as well so don't worry key light is the same in both the options are the same so um, whether you're using this or After Effects it doesn't matter it can be used for both so let's carry on um, first thing what we want to do is I want to mask out this area here because if we can zoom in hit space and it makes it full screen we've got this dark grey area and obviously once we key the green that will be left so if we overlay that onto something we'll just have this grey box here so we don't want that so what we could do is we can mask that out now obviously with After Effects you'll just draw you know around it and then just hit subtract however this one you need a roto node so hit the footage click tab and then type in roto there we go actually now what we want to do sorry don't do that you're going to need the roto separate and I'll explain why in a second so what we want to do is uh, we want to draw around the area that we well draw around the area that we want so come up here to the bezier so yeah and just click and then just create a box you can actually scroll through your footage and then try and cut off as much as possible you can even it's not necessarily rotoscoping but you can animate this mask to follow the character throughout and what that can do is that can limit if it depends on what kind of green screen you got but if you've got more shades on your green screen if you by doing this and it follows just around your object it'll give you less colors to key out so it'll be easier for you rather than you know having more shades to, to deal with so that's something to bear in mind with um, and to do key keyframes is you come up to here spline key and then hit the set a key on the current frame and then move forward and it, so on yeah so we won't do that we'll just cut this out so as long as it's is fine scroll through yep so the object doesn't exceed the limit of this boundary that we've just created um, so now we've got the mask sorted what we want to do is we want to attach that to our, our footage and what we need is we need a merge node and I'll show you why in a sec so click on the footage this time sorry click tab and then import and merge and the reason why is because when you check this little black arrow here and pull out it says mask and we want to use our roto as a mask oops that's not right scroll down here so what it is click and drag this mask and just pop it on the roto there we go and then that's just added this section only and if you come double click on merge node and come up to operation this is where you got your overlays basically your transfer transfer styles or transfer layers you know hard light divide difference all that kind of stuff so that's where they're found if you wish to use that in the future so for example if you have a um, you've got action essentials pack and you want to put the smoke in you will import it and then uh, which one is it you do or well, you could do screen screens there somewhere there it is so there it is um, and that's how you sort of transfer those layers onto your footage so we've got this keyed out now now what we need to do is we need to use the green screen so click on our footage hit tab and then import the key light so we're going to be using key light for this one and I'll explain to you why it's a good one to use or the, well, a good one to use for me anyway so now what I've done is I've got my source into my footage and the key light is going through to the A section of the merge so it's all going flowing through quite nicely still um, double click on the key light so we've got our options and what we want to do is where it says screen color just hover over here to this little black box click that and it comes up with a little pick whip tool like a little well, not pick whip it's a color picker sorry and then what we can do is we can hover over our footage and as you can see around this area as I hover over the colors change so we want to hover over the green that we want and then just hold control and click and what I do is that it'll pick that color for us um, so as we can see now we've got black background so like, I don't know what you know what's been subtracted and what hasn't so the most important tool that I like to use on key light is the screen mat so come up to view where it has final result we want to come to screen mat and what that does is it shows us our alpha channel 
So we can clearly see that this is our object and this is the background. You know, we want white to be our object because white is visible. Black is transparent or alpha. So anything black we won't see, anything white we will. So a nice little simple footage like this, we want our character to be fully white and the background black. So obviously the, the roto has completely cut this section out so we don't need to worry about it. So what we can do now is we can start adjusting these settings. So if we come to screen mat here, first of all we want to play with the clip black and clip white and get those settings as best as we can, uh, well minimalized as best we can. So clip black we can increase that and that will do is I'll get rid of the whites, it'll increase the blacks more slightly. So if I, hmm, what I'll do is I'll just bring this down just so it's a bit bigger. There we are. So if I go to clip black and I'll start bringing it up, I can clearly see that the white around the edges are going. But I have to be careful that the blacks in here don't become more apparent as well. So if I just keep going up, you can see that I'm losing detail in my asset. So you need to sort of play it as best you can. But, um, take out as much as you can. Obviously I can see around the tail this bit's getting removed so I'll take it to about there and the reason why if, if we go to clip white it re-adds that white back in especially in this area. Um, sorry, uh, sort that out in a bit. So bring the white down as you can see it's becoming more of a solid asset. Keep coming and what I do is I usually bring the clip white down until it flips there we go, it's flipped, so bring it back, Just and there we are. So we've got this nice sharp edge, well it's not nice, but it's, it's looking good for our key anyway. And we can come back to the clip black and maybe readjust still. So I'm going to bring that back a bit, just to get rid of the, the black edges here. So now we've just got this area to deal with. Now we can just add another mask and cut this out and then keyframe it. Um, that's a little bit more work, so I'm going to try the screen despot, or despot, I don't know what that is, but um, black and white. And I'm going to try and remove this. So let's try screen despot white. So it's obviously quite blurry, but keep going as long as this area is still quite tickety boo. Now I'm seeing I'm losing a bit of detail here. So if I bring that up and then screen deposit black, I don't think that does anything. Oh, well, nothing useful for me anyway. Not for this key, so I'll leave that. Right, yeah, let's try a bit more clip white. Right, it doesn't look like this is going to go. Oh, let's go on the clip black. So we're still just adjusting settings. I'm hoping we can get rid of all this without you know, affecting our footage. <sighs> oh, so we got this little bit here. Actually, I will come back a bit because I'm losing a bit there. So I'm trying to be really accurate with it. Okay, that'll do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another roto and then I'm going to animate that through. So what we'll need to do now, I want to add another roto. I don't know if you could do two rotos actually on on one tag. Let's have a look. Actually, no, no. You tell. I'm not actually going to do that. Double click on it and I'm just going to readjust these. Keep the mask in itself. So if I scroll through now and make sure that doesn't, oh, there we go, look. So that's a bit we need to sort out ourselves. And I'm obviously hitting keyframes on now. So if I go to dope sheet, we can see where the keyframes are being added. So keep the 32 frame one, because that's the one I've just imported or in inserted, shall I say. Um, and I'll keep going, just keep scrolling through. That's quite close to the edge, but oh, there we go. So what I'll do is I'll come to about here, add another keyframe, move forward slightly where it's just going to knock over, and then bring that out just a bit more. Keep coming forward, and then what I'll do is I will bring that back a bit as he comes in, just uh, as he comes in, just to cut this area off as well. So he's running quite nicely. Right, I think that's fine. He's all in shot and we got rid of that area. So what we can do now, we can come back to our node graph and um, double click on key light and go to final result. And what that does now, 
we can clearly see if I just add a background in as well if I bring this desert in now I'm not going to start playing around with the aspect ratio of this but as we can see we got our bunny on this footage now and it looks quite nice um, although I don't like the hard edges as much so what you can do is you can go into key light come back into screen matte just to see it a lot better because he's obviously wearing a that'll do the, the fluffy outfit it'll be nice and feathered around the edge so that will help us actually so if we go to screen matte and then come to screen softness we can just bring that up a bit just to make the edge look a bit more fluffy like so that's quite beneficial for us because it's a soft edge if it's a harder edge it's a bit different but oops it should be just fine so there we go now we've got our softened edge and our key is perfectly on our footage so that's how to use a key light guys in inside nuke um, I have actually noticed an error here so let's see what's going on there oh, it's a bit hard to see with this lag Ah, I think it's because da -da -da, node graph roto oops I'm creating a new one now Let's have a look look at that. There we are, it's fine now, it's not it's not readjusting. So yeah, um I can't remember what I was gonna say, but this is how to use key light inside Nuke guys. Um like I said, it can transfer over to After Effects. All these settings are pretty much spot on the same as After Effects. You've got your your view screen matte option, your screen matte settings with a little drop down arrow pretty much exactly the same as this so uh, please like and comment hope this has helped and i'll see you in the next video peace